Psych grind of training Psych grind of training Psych Grinder 3 provides an amazing range of features for creating hover and click effects. In this guide, we're going to take a look at how Psych Grinder buttons and menus can change in appearance in response to the mouse pointer, and how they can also make other page elements change in appearance. We are not going to talk about how to link buttons and menu items to other web pages, downloadable files, and things like that. Linking is covered in its own essentials guide, so if you're looking for information about linking, you're in the wrong place. And if you're looking for instructions on knitting a sweater for your dog, you're really, really in the wrong place. Modern web pages have a lot of interesting ways to visually respond to mouse movements and clicks. Buttons made from images can look like anything and can completely change in appearance on hover and or click. Buttons and menu items made from search engine friendly CSS text can also change in appearance on hover and or click although in more limited ways. Arbitrary images, text, and really whole areas of your page can appear or disappear when a button is hovered over or clicked on. And of course, submenus can pop up or fly out based on mouse movement or clicking. Many of these changes to your pages can be animated with fades or with movement. You create all of these effects just using layers with hints. So let's take a look at the simple techniques we can use to make our pages come alive. It's alive! Oh, image buttons. Image buttons are the cool friend that CSS text buttons always wanted to be like in high school. Sure, image buttons never ended up going to college, but they were so popular. The image in image buttons refers to the fact that these buttons end up as rendered images on our website, but they don't have to start that way. We create them by placing the button and other button-related hints on any kind of layer in Photoshop, type layers, object layers, even layer groups. The simplest image button is just a layer in Photoshop with the button hint added to its name. That's enough to let SiteGrinder know you want this layer to make something happen when someone clicks on it. But that's a little boring. All the really cool image buttons change their look when the mouse button is hovering over them as an encouragement to click, as well as showing off our crazy web skills. To make this happen, we only need to create a separate image layer named after the button layer but with the hover hint instead of the button hint. Because these two layers both have the same name but use different hints, SiteGrinder will know they're two parts of the same whole. Hover layers can look like anything we want, though in practice they should resemble the button in a lot of ways so as not to confuse or frighten our site visitors. Notice how the button layer completely disappears when the hover layer appears. They never appear at the same time. The only real restriction with hovers is that at least some part of the hover layer has to intersect some part of the button layer. Which makes sense if you think about it. If we want to make something appear or disappear on another area of our page when we hover over the button, we use other layers with different hints. We'll discuss those variations after we talk about text buttons and menus. Text buttons are made of CSS text on the final page. They can only be created by adding the button hint to type layers in Photoshop. Since type layers can become either image buttons or text buttons, we need to tell SiteGrinder which to make. To cause a type layer to become a CSS text button, we add the text hint to its name in addition to the button hint. As a shorthand for this, we can skip the text hint and instead just set the type layer's anti-aliasing to none. The main difference between text and image buttons is that the text buttons don't use separate layers to indicate their click and hover states. Instead, we determine how the button text changes in style in the design manager of SiteGrinder. While we can't get quite as fancy as we can with image buttons, there are a lot of CSS options available, including background color, border, etc. The 
text buttons can be handy, but multi-button text menus are even more convenient and powerful. Like teenagers, text buttons prefer to congregate on web pages in little text button cliques known as menus. Because text menus are so common on web pages, SiteGrinder provides a menu hint that can turn a single type layer in Photoshop into a flexible, search engine friendly, multi item text menu on the built web page, which is a lot quicker than creating a bunch of individual type layers and using the button hint on each. To create a text menu, you place the menu hint on a type layer in Photoshop. SiteGrinder will figure out the individual menu items based on the contents of the type layer. If the type layer has more than one line, like this one, each line will become an individual menu item. If all the text is on the same line, then SiteGrinder will figure out which words and phrases are unique menu items by looking for multiple spaces or spaces mixed with the vertical bar character as seen here. The same Design Manager panel we used for text buttons, we also used to set the hover and click styles for text menus. Aside from the obvious convenience of being able to make many text buttons with one layer and one hint, text menus have a number of other special powers. You can add more menu items in the Content Manager long after you deploy your pages. Menu items are ideal for search engine optimization. And finally, menu items can automatically change in appearance to indicate that they represent the current page. Just like individual image and text buttons, menu items can also make other page elements appear and disappear when the menu items are hovered over or clicked on, which is what we'll discuss in the next section. Buttons and menu items can change not only themselves on hover and click, but can also change other parts of the page. If you want one or more layers somewhere else on a page to suddenly appear when your site visitor hovers over a button, you can name the layer or layers after the button and give them the hover show hint. Here, for example, we have turned the site logo into a button by naming its layer zombie-button. To make this gruesome hand layer appear when we hover over zombie-button, we change its name to zombie-hover show. Note that the hover show layer covers the slogan. It would be very handy if the slogan could disappear when the zombie hand appears, which is one of the reasons why SiteGrinder supports the hover hide hint, which is the opposite of the hover show hint. Now let's take a quick look at the built page to see these hints in action. If we'd wanted for these layers to change on clicking instead of hovering, we would have just used the click show and click hide hints instead. If you really want to go nuts with this stuff, and I'm not recommending you do, a single button can have a click state, a rollover state, multiple hover show layers, multiple click show layers, multiple hover hide layers, and multiple click hide layers all at the same time. And not only that, these hints can be used on layer groups as well as individual layers. Not only that, but hover and click hints aren't even restricted to just images. You can show and hide web text and even complex interactive elements like buttons with their own hover and click states. Finally, showing and hiding can actually be animated, which is what we'll talk about next. All of this hiding and showing on click and hover is fun, but today's Web 2.0 internet users demand more. That's where SiteGrinder's animation features come in. Notice how the hand and the slogan don't just suddenly disappear and reappear. They actually fade in and out over time. Fading is the animation effect that SiteGrinder automatically applies to show and hide layers. You can adjust the animation settings using the animation panel of SiteGrinder's design manager. Click in the type column next to the layer whose animation you'd like to modify. For fade, we can set the duration and the ease, which controls how the animation accelerates and decelerates. Notice how Bounce Ease Out changes the way the fade occurs over time. I think for this particular site, however, a slide transition will be, shall we say, more effective. 
Oh yeah, that's the stuff. The final piece of the animation system is the Move From hint, which allows you to precisely animate hover show and click show elements from any point on your page to any other. In this site, we want to frighten, I mean encourage our visitors to click the store item in our text menu. Let's have a tiny version of our hand be a hover show for the store menu item by just naming it store-hover show. Now for the really fun part. I want this hand to animate up to this position from a position farther below the menu to create a more surprising effect. We tell SiteGrinder where a layer should start out in its animation by creating a layer with a matching name, positioning this layer where we want the motion to begin, and giving it the move from hint. What you put in the move from layer itself doesn't really matter but it's easy to tell what's going on if we just use a copy of the hover show layer. The move from layer won't create a duplicate graphic. Now let's see this in action on the built page. We've given the move from animation a bounce ease effect. Notice how the hand maintains its layer order from Photoshop. It's above the text, but below the menu just where we want it. Move from works with click show layers as well. Now let's put it all together. Hover show and click show are used to create submenus, sometimes called drop down menus or pop up menus. In this example, we've created a text menu layer that we want to use as a submenu for the job openings item in the main menu. To make this happen, we need to make it a hover show for this item by naming it job openings hover show. We also need to tell SiteGrinder to treat it like a menu, so we add the menu hint. I'll turn the content layer back on and build. Now that we're in the design manager, we can give this menu animation settings like any hover show layer and CSS style settings like any menu layer using the appropriate design manager panels. With all of these powerful hints and options for controlling layer visibility, you may wonder how you can possibly keep track of which layers should be visible or hidden in the Photoshop document itself. Actually, you don't have to. The layer visibility of the show and hide layers and even the hover layers is totally up to you. SiteGrinder will do the right thing regardless of the visibility you choose for such layers. The only layer whose visibility matters is the layer with the button hint or the menu layer with the triggering menu item. As long as that layer is visible in a page's layer comp, the layer comp visibility of the other layers simply doesn't matter and is up to your preference. There is one exception to this, which is an advanced feature involving the column hint, which will be covered in the column documentation. We've come a long way in this video, but you now know most of what there is to know about site grinder buttons, menus, and animation. Time to cook up some popcorn and try some experiments, wouldn't you say?